Major support for these broadcasts is provided by the CUNY TV Foundation, New York Community Bank, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Capital One Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Genova Burns, G. and Tomasi and Webster, M&T Bank, The Wickoff Group, Chelsea Lighting, Greenberg Traurig, LLP. Additional support is provided by Ackman Ziff Real Estate, AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Leumi, USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Colliers International, NYC, Cushman and Wakefield, DDG, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Eastern Union Funding, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Herrick Feinstein LLP, Hersha Hospitality Trust, Investors Bank, New Banks, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Orfanides Centurion Holdings, John Katsimatidis Red Apple Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans, Madison Realty Capital, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, People's United Bank, Popular Community Bank, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, Urban American, and these friends. Entertainment. People want to be in entertainment. People want to be in showbiz. Why do they want to be in showbiz? How hard is it to get into showbiz, especially if you're a young person? So today, this friar decided to assemble four other friars, four young entertainers, and to talk about how it is to get into the world of entertainment. My guests, they include from Wayne, New Jersey, Danny Backer, singer, artist, performer, musician, and a nice guy. From Connecticut, Mikey Fine, who is a comedian. Is that what you attempt to do? Yeah, that's what they call it. Yeah. They, they call it, okay. Yeah. Okay, from Middletown, New York, fantastic singer, Jenna Esposito. And last but not least, I don't know how we found him, but from Alabama, a stand-up comic, Michael Salloway. How do you decide to become an entertainer or a writer? Because I know you still try to write jokes for certain people, but they don't pay you enough. Otherwise, you would have got yourself a nice jacket today as opposed to the Nehru jacket from Alexander's. I'm going to have to call you out on that. Someone, someone told you that. Yeah. It's, uh, no, I, I um, what was the question? <laughs> How do you decide to become an entertainer? Yeah. Uh, could, could I just, before I answer that, I just before I fr forget, I wanted to thank everyone at uh, the Smithers Institute down in Texas for helping me through a rough patch. Okay, <laughs> Danny, <laughs> he's, he's not <laughs> speaking to us. How, how do you decide? You said you, it's, it's, it's the not, VCR. It's not a joke. It's, uh, uh, okay, I have a Danny, problem. <laughs> talk to me. Yeah, uh, what was the question? Okay, how do you decide to... Become an what, what started it? Well, for me, what started it all, I mean, you know, you got to remember my brother, Josh, is also a friar. Uh, and uh, we kind of always had been a team for a long time and uh, always kind of worked on, uh, you know, writing, creating. Like Penn and Teller? No, because we both speak, you know. But it was probably, I mean, like it started when we watched, uh, my, my parents used to go to the local library. This is before VCRs were a common thing in the house. And uh, they would get out the old film strips, you know, like Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy, of course. And we really took to that and really got into, like, slapstick comedy. And, and uh, we saved, this sounds very, you know, old school, uh, hometown America, but we saved up money from our paper route. And the first thing we bought was a video camera. <laughs> and we would write uh, films and, and do these films. And it just kind of stuck. And uh, since then, you know, um, we've always gotten into uh, the entertainment uh, Industry as uh, writers and as performers, and uh, you know we have our we had our own off Broadway show, 
that we did, and we toured around the country, went to Europe with it. And, uh, but I, all, all that while, I've also been a, a very uh, serious musician, working as a, a saxophonist and a singer. You're very good. Uh, I've seen you on Thursday nights at the Friars, no oh. question. Jenna. Okay. Your family, dad's been in the business, right? Yeah, I grew up listening to him. When, uh, when my sister and I were little, uh, we would always sing with him and his band. Uh, they'd have rehearsals on the weekends. We'd go hang out. And uh, I just grew up listening to all this great music. And uh, we've got a tape of me when I was less than a year old trying to sing uh, Barry Manilow's Copacabana and <laughs> Can't Smile Without You. Less than a year old? Yeah. I, uh, I loved Barry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if I should be admitting that. Um, but no, that, uh, that I remember being able to sing, or trying to sing for as long as I can remember. Um, even before I could really talk, I was trying to sing some songs. So um, yeah, my dad was obviously my biggest and earliest influence, and he, he still is to this day. He's, he's my musical director, so whenever I do shows, uh, when at all possible, he comes with me, and he's the band leader, and does all my arrangements, and uh, it's something very special. Mikey? Um, I got in the business, or wanted to get in the business, because when well, my father was in the business, uh, the Shmata business, and he told me to get as far away from that as possible, um, and I did. I think I went too far because he's not real thrilled. Uh, but <laughs> I always enjoyed making people laugh, being the cut up in class, and uh, just just making people laugh. You know, grew up watching the Saturday Night Live, trying to imitate them, and just followed it up here. Uh, Smithers, uh, uh, stop <laughs> joking. How did mm. you really decide to get into this business? Uh, I'm not really sure I'm in the business. You know, it's uh, just. Uh, I don't know, growing up uh, on the tribe, there was, you know, nothing, you know, nothing to do. And just, I figured it would be the way out. <laughs> <laughs> here's the, here's the, the, the point, you know, when I had um, um, Stewie on the show, and when I did his life story, he was saying, you know, Stewie's in his 70. This is Stewie Stone, who's a comedian. <clears throat> he believes that it's easier today for a young comedian or to make it into the market because the world is different. There are more comedy clubs, mm. there's social media, there's the internet, you know, there's a variety of things. So he, he was saying it's easier. And, you know, we were joking before that, you know, a lot of entertainers got into this business, and I don't your father in the Schmata business, we understand, but people, there was the Catskills, okay? You know, people started from the Catskills, and even though you're young, you still might reminisce, but Jenna mentioned that you're gonna be up in the Catskills. I'm gonna I, be up I mean, there. the bungalow <laughs> colonies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's still, there's still yeah. Catskills. I mean, it's, it's not what it was, obviously, and I'm jealous. You know, a lot of the musicians I work with tell me of the glory days, and uh, when I was in high school, I was in the All-State Chorus, and we, uh, had our rehearsals and performances at the Concord, so I. But it was on its way down then. It was just very sad to see what it had become. But um, no, they're still they're still hungry for the arts up there. And um, you know, there's a couple. Uh, there's Villa Roma and there's Kutcher's, of course. And then beyond that, there's the bungalow colonies. So I mean, there's still. So, so have you have you worked at the market yourself? Uh, not the castle. I've been there. In fact, I remember going to the Browns on one of the last weekends. You know, <laughs> it was kind of a sad. It was almost like a funeral. Uh, I thought everyone was dressed up in black for the funeral. It turned out to be Hasidim, <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was really quite it's a. It's good for the, uh, the the singer to do a little comedy, especially it's, it's, since he's uh, he can't do either. <laughs> no, it's actually what it's, it's affecting me. I don't know. Uh, it's sort of rubbing <laughs> off. But uh, um, no, as I was saying, uh, you know, it, it 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 was really quite like you said, a little sad to see it sort of the glory days. Stewie talks. You know, he was the opening act for Frankie Valley, you know, in the Four Seasons. Yeah. You know, there are, Vegas is bigger than ever. Yeah. Uh, Atlantic City, depending on that. Foxwoods, you know, casinos, you know, there are places. And, you know, there are other because of the, the venues. Do you think there, have, have you had an, any opportunity in any of these venues? Um, I've really never gone out to Vegas. I, I mean, I was down in uh, Cape May for the Cape May Comedy Festival this past weekend, which was a lot of fun, a good time. Uh, you know, growing up, I didn't even know what the Catskills were. I didn't. But how hard is it to be in the business thing? Well, I mean, this is, you know, everybody, you know, you, you want to be in Broadway. You want to be on the stars. What, what, how, do you, how do you get lucky? There, there's, you, so, there's so many levels, and, and if I might interject about that, I think my opinion about it is that, you know, Stewie talks about the older days being harder, and I think as young performers today, we think, I think at that time, it seemed like it was an easier time to break in 
only because you had so many things like vaudeville. You had, I mean, of course, vaudeville was before Stewie Stone's time, but burlesque, all these great comedians like Milton Berle, Buddy Hackett, all got their start from, you know, either the Catskills. They had these outlets, right? They got to do television work at the time. Even the movie business early on was just starved for anyone that was creative. Now, it's so much competition. But I think we're at, a, at sort of a new age because we're dealing with things like the internet and webisodes, web series, uh, YouTube. People are becoming, they're, they're hitting it big just by getting enough hits on YouTube. So we're almost like at this kind of renaissance that we haven't seen in the entertainment business since early, early days, you know? Uh, a vaudeville, people like a George Burns. But how, how do people find out about you? Well, I mean, there, I would say there's, you know, along Danny's uh, point, there, there are pros and cons to the Internet. Part of the problem I'm facing, I'm sure Danny is, and anybody else that's in the business these days trying to make it, um, there's so much out there that's so accessible, and how do you make yourself stand out? That, mm. That's the tricky part. And really, anybody with, you know, $20,000 and... <laughs> and uh, a vision can put out a CD or get songs on iTunes. Some street in town, and I know he's looking there for me. You know, you, you can have, you know, a video, as you say, you can get on iTunes because it's a free content. You can put it out there. You can, you can produce an album, okay? People don't buy DVDs and uh, CDs anymore, but you can have that. But how do you, how do you get to the next step? Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the tricky part. There's so many <laughs> levels of performance, and we've all had like a lot of great experience performing. But you know, it's like really when it comes down to making the money. You know, when you talk about being successful in the sense, because success is many levels. But making that money, you're basically, let's say, at a club in comedy. You're lucky. You're lucky if you're making ten bucks, twenty bucks in a, in a gig. But then you can go from twenty bucks to all of a sudden five thousand to ten thousand a night, depending on your name. And with music, it's like it's so much about. The promotional it's what you put into promotional like i'm currently on a album project right now and i'm getting some wonderful names people like houston person on saxophone is going to be playing warren vache frank uh you know vignola just wonderful be like you know bill big bill goodwin who was phil wood's drummer you know and uh all these wonderful surreal on me yeah, but, but what about you know in new york city you have comedy clubs which they may even allow Sleepy Boy over there to, to, to get on a comedy club. Okay, or, you know, you, you have Iridium, you, you have... Um, the jazz clubs. You, you have the jazz clubs. I mean, and then you have, you know, the certain of the cabarets, you know, uh, 54 Below and other things. Uh, how, how hard is it to get into these other these venues? It, it depends on the level of the venue. I mean, certainly there's outlets for everybody, and mm -hmm. we, we've all found them. But um, there, certain, certain venues are much more selective. Um, you know, like 54 Below, their prog programming is mostly you know, big-name Broadway stars, uh, which is terrific, because there needs to be a certain level of qui quality and something to aspire to. The problem I'm seeing now is for like, the mid-level performers, the ones who aren't household names or Broadway stars, but aren't just in off the bus, because... You're doing, like, open mic. So, like, exactly. I'm sort of, like, There's a big deal, so I could, like, probably get in there. Sort of, like, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like... I can see a Mike Fine performs the music of... Uh, who would you perform? Cole Porter. Yeah. Yes. Jeremy Latouche. <laughs> could you see that? Okay. And it, I mean, it's very tough. It's easy to get shows, but it's hard to get paying shows. I mean, like, I did a lot of shows in the months of June and July, and I don't want to brag, but I made $30, so... You know. $30 for June and July? Yeah, I, I don't want to brag, so... I mean, don't hit me up for dinner lunch. tonight. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I don't want to brag, but things are going pretty well. Um, but, but, you know. but, by the way, but, not but to that's, go back, I apologize. You, you, uh, you guys were talking about the Internet before. You, you may want to, like, elaborate, like, wh what, yeah, what it is, yeah, and stuff, or, like, some of the... People watching. Sure. I know my yeah. fan base in Alabama has no clue what the internet is. No, you they, want to explain that? I mean, I mean, do you Some have Facebook have pages? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A what? Okay, everybody. Dial. Absolutely. Facebook, Twitter. Okay. Facebook. I mean, so much of it's social media these days, and it's, it's really hard, really, because I'm not a self-promotional person, but you you have to be in this yeah. business to a certain degree. You be a hustler. You got to be a hustler. You know, I right? mean, because nobody else is going to push you if you're not pushing yourself, and it, it's a fine line between being annoying and being persistent. Mm. Now, mm. do Older entertainers, I mean, especially since we have <clears throat> a, a number of the fires <laughs> going. <Whoa>. Okay, <laughs> uh, do, 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 they, do they mentor? Do you see the, the mentoring process to help you get to the next stage? I mean, it, it's... Well, a, what it's, I've noticed at the fires, no. it's not... Well, it's not <laughs> just the older performers, but there's a real camaraderie. Um, yeah. Since I joined, I've been a member for about two years. You know, um, 
we, we help each other out. Danny has given me some leads. I've given him some leads. My friend Larry Stevens, he just got me a concert a couple weeks ago. Uh, Stan Gilbert, who runs the, the Cafe Thursdays, has been very helpful. So I think, um, I, unlike in other areas of show business, at least the circles I've moved in, it's not uh, quite so catty and it's a lot more helpful. There's I, a fraternal kind of well, uh, feeling. Yeah. Well, I feel like the younger ones, we all help each other. I, I don't see the older ones Where's really this? reaching out to, to help us. <laughs> the, uh, the soup, and, uh, this chicken soup. Is second half old of the deli. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, I mean, you have a day job. Right? Yes. Okay. Do you, is this your full-time mm, job? Full-time. I've been very, very blessed to make my living fully as an artist since I graduated mm -hmm. college. So, you know, whether it's acting, uh, in, you know, or performing or doing my music. So you have been, a SAG card? Yeah, SAG after equity. Oh, so you That's do. Right. Yeah, I expect I my residuals. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the same residuals as he has. Uh, <laughs> with the residuals. It's well, always good that no, we cleaned up. We cleaned up those residuals. What <laughs> happened? The makeup woman got them. Residual pineapple. No, no. But, I mean, your dad's been in the business for, what, 30 years? Oh, 50. 50 years. Okay. How, don't you get frustrated? It's a hard business. I mean... It's, it's tough, and that's why I, I do have a day job. I mean, luckily, New York is a very cheap place to live, so I'm <laughs> able to be okay. Uh, you know, if I were in a really expensive market like Alabama, <laughs> I wouldn't make it, but I'm here. Um, don't laugh. The real estate's booming down there. You get a trailer for so much. I mean, it's unbelievable, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough thing for me to be able to make it here. I don't. A lot of my friends that have been able to be successful, they're from here. They can you know, live at but, home with but, their parents. But, but, but here is the, the real question. What what is successful in the in, in in the show business? What what is successful? Business cards. <laughs> you have a business I, card. One of those. Yeah. No, I guess I've made it. <laughs> with gloss, with a with a glossy finish. Oh, oh, like, uh, not embossed, like, like an embossed yeah. kind of like. Amy, what 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 is it to make? It's funny, you know. I, I have a business card. Again, it goes into levels, and, and my wife kind of always says this because we have sometimes a different opinion of of success. And my wife's an actress, and. Um, currently starring in the Gallery Players, uh, playing Portia in uh, okay. most of the Venice. <laughs> in my plug. Anyway, uh, but, but, you know, she's saying to her, right, success is able to make a living. You know, I mean, some people have this idea, I think, of, oh, you've got to be a star, you've got to be a household name, and that's not the right thing, it's not the right goal to have when you're working in this business. Because to me, again, is a success at, are you doing what you love doing? Can you make a living at doing it without having to compromise your, your goals or your ambitions to, you know, either wait tables or, or stock shelves or have a, a gig? At a, I mean, and I think that's, that's where I think where people measure success. I mean, of course, you want to get to that point, and there's certain levels of success with people recognize you. You need a claim, and, and that's all part of it. But do, you, do you need an agent? I don't think you need one, but it sure helps. <laughs> and what, and what, what about a publicist? Um, I don't have either of those, and I'm clearly rolling in it, so maybe I do need uh, Who's this? Me. Mm. <laughs> I, think, I think a publicist helps. Um, I, I've hired one when I've done bigger projects. I don't have a full-time one because mm. I can't afford it. But, <laughs> but um, like I, uh, a couple years ago, I did a big Connie Francis tribute. Um, which I, that, that's basically what people know me for the most. And for that, I hired a publicist because I was really proud of it. It was a huge project, and I wanted to get the word out there. Mm. And, um, it, I mean, it was worth every penny. I wish I could do it every day. But I think especially if you've got a big project you're working on. What about the, the opportunities to, uh, I mean, and it's really big to, to, to get on a, uh, and Jimmy Fallon is a fellow fire or somebody like that. Are there mm. oper have how hard is it to, to make it for TV. Well, again, I, I mean, you know. I mean, like, how do you? I mean, I mean we've made it. We're here. <laughs> we did. It wasn't hard. I just drove through the Lincoln Tunnel. Okay. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> Why you've been on TV? When? No, I've, I've been. I've been on three TV. minutes. Like? No, people <laughs> because like people know me like so they went me on. So, you know, you mentioned TV, and I remember when, uh, was it Caroline Ray? Ca Caroline Ray, is that the name? Remember she had that big show yeah. years ago, right? So my brother and I, when we were doing publicity for our, our off-Broadway show, she wanted us on the show. Silver Spoon wow. she was on. Right, yeah. back in the day. But Caroline Ray. So we were all set to go on, and then she got canceled. Oh, Laverne. Oh, the last. So we didn't make it on there. But, you know, that's, that's like, I think, again, it's like, yeah, you can have an agent. You can have, but you really, as a performer, until you get to that point where you're bringing in all that I, money... I mean, 
do people promote the way I'm promoting today the younger performers? I mean, are there are people really out there? I mean, I, trying to help. I don't think so. I mean, the the people that are making it on the shows have had some bit of success. I feel like they're not just. I mean, they're pulling out of the clubs. I mean, how do you get on Saturday Night Live? I, I mean, that's. They're, well, that's, well, they you know, recruit a lot of... from your show, don't they? No, <laughs> I <right>. wish so. <laughs> <laughs> While we're here? <laughs> well, a lot of times they recruit from places like a second city or like yeah. even, you know, uh, Upright Citizens Brigade here in the city where they get people that have strong improv background and stuff. But, you know, so much of that, it, it is, it's like finding the right channels. There's no real way to <laughs> write a book and say this is how, because you know how you've you, made you it is different than someone else You know made. what? You bring up an interesting thing. On my other show, The Life oh, Story Show, <laughs> where I had, you know, um, you know, Stewie Stone, Richard Kind, Lloyd Price, and, you know, I listen to their live stories. Now, uh, Richard Kind, he really gives a lot of credit to Second City. Yeah. You know, he went out to Chicago. That's where he met a number of people, you know, and he's, mm -hmm. you know, he met George Clooney over there, and, you yeah. know, there are people over there. Uh, I mean, Lloyd Price, who's older than me, you know, Lloyd Price owns and still <clears throat> owns all his music, you know, <laughs> and, you know, he wrote it and performed it, and it's still around there. And today, you know, you know, there is Pandora, there's iHeartRadio, right. there's all this. That well, it's like uh, YouTube now, a lot of ways trying to get publicity. Like, I just filmed a video, I don't want to push it too hard, but <laughs> Bad Politician Apology. If you Very go to YouTube, point, yeah. thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> if you go to YouTube and look at that, and it's also on Funny or Die, and just do a search for either Michael Salloway or Bad Politician Apology. Don't worry, you know, this one, uh, with the exception of the editing of uh, Mikey Fine, okay, will be on YouTube, and it will be on iTunes, and it's, and it's on the Stoller Report app. I mean, so there are a number of people who, who will search this, and, you know, it'll be good for you. How old are you? 35. Mm. 34. 34. Turning, uh, what, what day is today? <laughs> uh, how old? 34? I'm, I'm comfortable. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when do you say quit? Or Never. when? Okay, that's... <laughs> you don't. Right. I mean, I think, you know, that those people that have quit, they quit. It's not an easy business. You don't go into this mm. business and say, I've got an 11-year or 12-year plan, and if I don't make it, but, you know... You well, have... some people do, though. Yeah. Uh, out of one-year plan. It's been extended uh, <laughs> indefinitely. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, it, it becomes, it's sort of like it's a way of life for a person that truly wants to be that. You have that passion, you have that drive, and you just keep going. You know? I mean, but you, you know, you're, you're married, and you, you have a, a wife who's in this business, so, you know, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Mm -hmm. How hard is, and she's more of the, uh, in the theater business? Yeah, she's uh, uh, primarily straight theater, you know. She loves doing classic Shakespeare, Shakespearean work, and uh, we met doing a national tour. In fact, my brother and I were hired with our theater company to write a show about Dr. Seuss mm -hmm. back in 03, you know, and for Random House, and that toured the country, and, and she had come from, uh, you know, uh, right from college, got hired up to our company, met doing summer stock, and went on tour, fell in love. So and you're they, dating the help. Well, you know, we're all, we're all help at that point. We're, we're, we're all help, you know. Which yeah. country? This country. This country. Mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. how, have you performed <clears throat> around the country, or? I performed uh, a lot in New York, obviously, and a decent amount in California. Missing the middle of the country, but I've got the coast covered. We, we understand from Michael's <laughs> discussion, the middle of the country, you know, we're not certain of this. I mean, do you think, <laughs> do you think it's really important, perhaps, to get into, uh, into Vegas? Uh, that's one of my biggest goals. I mean, really, to be able to, to sustain a living as a singer, that's really right. where I want to end even, up. You know, you don't have to make it, but if, if you're in the, you know, uh, there's so many venues in Vegas because of the you know, oh, yeah. different rooms. And right. I mean, rest. that's just that's like the the mecca of showbiz right now. I think it is. It, it, it's. I mean, AC is great. I, I've played AC before, and I know you've done uh, Yonkers, right? Which is a nice <laughs> little Empire spot. City. And Empire City. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I love the little. But concerns, you know but something? That's really important because of the fact that very few people realize that Aqueduct is one of the most successful casinos, and it's just the game. Place. Right. You know. Uh, Yonkers is a great place. The other I love venues, it there. They've got a great you know, the, stage. The Finger Lakes, you know, all of these places over there, you know, and if you could get up to Saratoga, you know, even sure. Sagamore or something like well, that. Well, the nice thing about casinos is, I mean, the, they're ready for entertainment. They want to be entertained. They want it, yeah. And it's, it's refreshing because a lot of the shows we do in the city, you have to hustle yourself. You're responsible for getting your audience in, and if you don't bring a certain amount of people, the venue d isn't happy with you. And so much of it is self-publicity. In the casino, it's like, wow, it's a regular yeah, crowd, there. and they want to be entertained. Audience, it's, like, it's, I love yeah. it. I've played in a lot of casinos. I mean, I haven't performed in them, but I've gambled in them. <laughs> and, uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. I've, been to, I've been to Vegas where I played in the Tropicana. My brother and I had our show there. And um, 
It, it's a great place to now, go. Now, now, with the exception of him, because we don't know what he's doing over here, you write your own material. Right? Absolutely, I, I, that's the only way. Okay. Yeah, I've written a lot, but when it comes to performing music, it's a different thing. I do a lot of you know standards and stuff like that. You know, I love the music of. Uh, do you think you know? I did a show a couple of months ago with the Friars and Friends. Discussed the the older Friars and Friends. I had Len Cario, uh, I had Stan, and all the rest. Do you think that? The cabaret, which I love, is is coming. People love the cabaret business, the cabaret music, and all the rest. Yeah, I mean, it it's thriving. You know, it's it never really left. And I, you know, when I moved here, I moved here in 2003. Um, you know, I, my first show was at Danny's Skylight Room, which has since gone by the wayside. But it seems like for every club that goes away, something new pops I mean, up. Well, I mean, there's Birdland. I mean, Birdland. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is you have a real crossover now of, of live entertainment in, in the music world. There's a big crossover of jazz people and cabaret people. And, and theater people. Like, uh, there's not as much separation. And that's why I, th I think something like Studio 54 or 54 Below, you get all the Broadway people in doing their cabaret shows, which is really great. And I it's, mean, that's where Len did it, Len Cabaret. Yeah, yeah we I saw that show it was you know, wonderful. He, yeah. he did that, you know, he wanted to go over there, you know, Jamie DeRoy. Or, yeah, and it's making Friars. cabaret like a viable nightlife option again, whereas, you know, for a while it was, it was kind of on the fringes, but I think uh, with the emergence of that and, you know, Feinstein's while it was open was, was great for cabaret too. You and even like um, the, Carlisle. the Carlisle now, they're doing late Where's night the, series, the um, like Thursday through Saturday, I think, where they're mm -hmm. allowing up and comers to do late night shows at the Carlisle. So, um, so we've got some really good things going on, and hopefully, Fine Science is going to find a place great, to reopen. It's great as well. opportunities for people in our situation to try well, and, and, like, you know, know find like venues Bird, and stuff. And Birdland, I mean, they've got the best thing in town going on Monday night's cast party. Right. Now, that, uh, that's an interesting thing for my viewers. They, the Monday night cast party, I've heard of that at Birdland and other places. Tell me about that. It is, it's amazing. I started going there in 2005, and I've been there. I, well, I used to go every Monday night for years, and just over the past year, it's you know, I've, I've gotten a little busier, so I haven't been able to go every Monday. But it's amazing. It runs from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. And really, it's, it's a, a list it an talent. Open call? It, yeah, it's, a, it's an open mic. So if you show up by, like, 9.15, anybody can sing if you get yourself on the list in time. And really, it's, a, it's remarkable the amount of talent that shows up there. Strictly singers, though. Um, pretty much. Once in a while, they're comedian or contortionist. But Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a, oh, there's a guy who does some crazy things. He eats a balloon that's like this long. But, um, that's talent. We're going to get that's talent, a, little fire, a, little, a, little, a little fire in the uh, broomstone. Yeah, but, but, uh, but no, it's great. And a lot of Broadway people come. Um, we get some Nashville songwriters in there. Bon Jovi showed up one night. Um, Liza, right? Liza Minnelli Liza. comes there sometimes. Mike Feinstein. Feinstein. Um, you just never know who's going to be there. Uh, Marilyn May goes there a lot. Um, but it really, any Monday night I'm free, I try to go. I hope that uh, in my new season, which starts mm -hmm. in September the 13th, maybe we'll have all of you back with the exception of Mikey, because <laughs> Mikey hasn't been able to. The meds haven't really <laughs> helped what, him out today. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Danny, Mikey, uh, Jenna, and Michael, and I'll see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>